Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I'm George Conley with Scratch Golf Tips, and today we're going to be looking at the golf swing and the golf game of Brian Harmon. Brian Harmon's won three times on the PGA Tour. By now, he's most well known for winning the British Open in 2023 in pretty epic style, really blowing away most of the field at that event. And I think Harmon is really a guy who's flown under the radar throughout his career, but he's had a solid career, obviously, uh, you know, top 10 in the world currently, and a pretty interesting golf swing and certainly an interesting way that he plays the game of golf. He he goes against the grain of a lot of what we've seen be successful in the past few years. So let's start off by breaking down his golf swing. I really like Brian Harmon's golf swing. It's a fairly simple motion and it doesn't generate a, a great deal of power, especially because he is of pretty small stature comparatively to a lot of those guys out on the PGA Tour. But a few things to note that I find interesting in Harmon's golf swing. Uh, one is that throughout the takeaway and at the top of the backswing, the, the club face is left fairly open, just pretty slightly open throughout most of the golf swing. And that's fine because he can just rotate that club face throughout his transitionary move and through the ball. That's totally fine. But another part of it that's pretty interesting is that his golf swing is slightly under plane. So he comes into the ball just a little bit shallow. So having that open club face throughout the golf swing would be conducive to a little bit of a fade and having a in to out club path, even just slightly, would be a little bit conducive to a draw. So in Harmon's golf swing, those two things almost combat one another and it really allows him to be pretty straight with his ball striking. A lot of guys really like to play that big high draw or these penetrating fades and Harmon can do both by slightly manipulating either that club face or that angle through the ball that his club path is on. But by and large, if he doesn't have to do any shaping, he can really rely on that fairly short but very straight ball, which certainly has its benefits but also has its drawbacks. Someone like Brian Harmon, who does hit it pretty straight, but not too far, will obviously be very successful on short and narrow courses. We just saw him play well at TPC Sawgrass, which really isn't a beast of a course in terms of distance, but you're penalized for missing your spots. And as we saw, Harmon had a great performance there. But some of those really long courses where you have to be getting the ball out there, like Torrey Pines, uh, he, he may struggle out a little bit more. Another interesting aspect of Harmon's golf swing that certainly goes against the grain of a lot of golfers is at impact and sometimes even a little bit past impact, his trail heel for him, left-handed golfer, his left heel stays on the ground at impact. It obviously comes up after and through the ball, but there are many golfers, especially those who are uh, smaller guys who hit the ball a long way, uh, maybe Justin Thomas, Colin Morikawa, who at impact, their trail heel is well off the ground and they really use that heel coming off the ground to let those hips open up and generate a lot of power, which is a fine move and I think it's a pretty popular move, but this golf swing that Brian Harmon has proves that that isn't a necessary move to, you know, really get the ball out there. Again, I'm not, Brian Harmon is not long by PGA Tour standards, but comparatively to the average golfer, he's extremely long. You know, he's 37 years old and he, and he certainly gets the ball out there pretty far. So if you're looking at your golf swing uh, from a, a down the line view and that trail heel is not really off the ground at impact or it's just barely off the ground, uh, that's totally fine. You, you can absolutely make do with it. And a few other aspects of the golf swing, which I find interesting, uh, he does have an overlap grip, which is uh, something that is probably less common in professional golf compared to an interlocking grip. But again, if you have an overlap grip to the club and it's a grip that you're comfortable with and you can provide consistent results, uh, there's nothing wrong with an overlap versus an interlocking grip. For any golfer, there is not a correct answer as to how you should be gripping the club when it comes to overlap or interlock. Just work with whatever makes more sense for you and whatever's more comfortable. Now let's talk about Harmon's game as a whole. I, there have been a few times where he's been characterized as kind of this, this junkyard dog, a bulldog. And I don't think that he's always referred to as a bulldog because he went to Georgia, but he's just kind of a scrappy golfer who really likes to have you know his moments when he can come through in the clutch. And I think that there's something to be said for that kind of golfer. Um, he's had a lot of performances where he has 
kind of start, started off a tournament slow, and he can really build out and, and continue to put his head down and make up ground, which I think is a great quality for any golfer to have. You know, obviously with someone like Brian Harmon, he has 72 holes to grind it out and get back into a tournament. But for anyone watching at home, even if you're just playing a little bit of a basic uh, you know, 18 hole money match with your with your buddies or whatever it may be. If you start off slow, it's a very good quality to have to remain patient and to know when to be aggressive and and to continue to fight through a round. I think that a lot of golfers, you know, you make a couple bogeys, maybe make a, a double or a triple early in a round, you kind of get down on yourself. Let Brian Harmon's mentality be a lesson to you that, you know, you can always continue to fight, maybe pick up a birdie, go on a little par streak. Just keeping your head in a round can be really, really beneficial to a long-term outcome. Another aspect of Harmon's game that I think is extremely overlooked is his short game. And, you know, there are a lot of great golfers in terms of short game, but for someone like Brian Harmon, who doesn't get the ball out there a lot, he does have to scramble and kind of lean on his short game, especially on those longer golf courses, which, as I said earlier, they don't really fit his game, but he can still compete and has had some really solid results on those golf courses. I think one thing to mention in his short game is if you've ever watched Harmon throughout a round and his scrambling, he's incredibly versatile in his shot selection because he practices all different kinds of shots. I think it's very important for golfers to have a stock chip shot that they can turn to you know, a particular club, ball placement, and strike that you like. For me, I like to play a 56 degree off my back foot a little bit steep. And that's just my standard, you know, say 20 yard uh, chip shot from, from the fairway. And that's a shot that I'm comfortable with. But if I don't have a lot of green to work with, I can't hit that shot. So you need to be versatile and work on different clubs, different flights, different types of, you know, uh, shallow versus steep swings from different, uh, you know, bunkers, thick grass, thin grass, all of that. Every golfer at home can benefit from becoming more versatile around the greens. Uh, I know that everyone says, oh yeah, you know, that guy has good hands, that guy has bad hands. At the end of the day, I think good hands are made by constant practice and, you know, working on club face awareness and making the right selections is obviously going to help you as well. So always be mindful of what you can be doing around the greens in terms of your practice. Now, regarding Brian Harmon's practice, I have read in the Golf Digest article uh, where Justin Parsons, his coach, has spoken about one of the most important things that Brian works on is his alignment. Now, when it comes to golf instruction and becoming a better golfer, I would say working on your alignment is one of the least flashy things that you can do. It's not a very attractive thing to do. Uh, for a lot of people, it's not very fun to do, but it is absolutely incredible incredibly important and often very overlooked by amateur golfers. All too often golfers will hit a very solid golf shot, but as soon as they look up from their strike, the ball is just not on the right line. And it doesn't matter how flush you struck your seven iron, if your alignment is improper, you're not gonna get the result that you want. So always be working on the driving range, focusing on your alignment. I think everyone in a pre-shot routine should have some semblance of alignment in, in their golf swing. Uh, using alignment rods, things of that nature are things that Brian Harmon works on all the time. Justin Parsons, his coach, always working on different drills, different ways to get that alignment into your golf swing. And I think it's extremely important to think about. And the last thing that I wanna speak about in terms of Harmon's golf swing is something that's a little bit controversial and that is his waggling before the golf ball and kind of his pre-shot routine. Now, I think a lot of people really saw this come up in throughout the Open Championship when he was you know, really on television a lot. He was leading a major championship. You have to watch most of his shots on, on the Sunday round. And he spends a while over the ball and he does a lot of waggling. A lot of people are pretty upset Set, you know from a viewing standpoint that he's taking up a lot of time and my rebuttal on that is I, I do understand how it's a little bit frustrating to watch it but there are golfers who also spend a lot of time over the golf ball you know whether it's just standing still or doing little rehearsals whatever it may be Harmon is certainly one of the longest but if we're talking a couple of extra seconds over the ball I really don't think it makes a huge difference. Uh, the PGA Tour does have pacing rules, and if he was ever to be you know, taking too long throughout an entire round, they would let him know when he would have to pick it up. But 
The reason that he does all of the waggling is actually because he, he said in press conferences that he just waggles until he feels comfortable over the ball. He will not swing his club until he's fully committed to the shot. And I think that that's something that anyone could learn from and, and listen and, and heed at home is that if you're standing over the ball and you just don't like the image of the shot you're trying to hit, maybe you're trying to swing the club too hard or maybe you just don't think that you have – you know, the, the ability to knock a club down a couple of yards, step off the ball and recommit. I, even if it takes a couple of seconds, I'm not saying do this every hole, that would certainly be annoying, but always be committed to your shot when you begin that takeaway. I hope you learned a thing or two about Brian Harmon's game and how his game, uh, his golf swing, some of the aspects that he practices, uh, I, I hope you learned how that can benefit you at home. If you have any questions or comments on anything that I mentioned or failed to mention, please leave them in the comment section down below. As always, thank you all very much for watching. Play well and take care.